Making the headlines tonight, the minister delegate attached to the Prime Minister states to the media that the Prime Minister's visit to South Korea has brought a lot of benefits to Cambodia. U.S. President Joe Biden and Russia's Vladimir Putin spoke on the phone for over an hour after Washington and its allies warned that Russian forces could invade Ukraine at any moment. Former NFL MVP Adrian Peterson is arrested on a felony domestic violence charge. And experience the magic of Valentine's Day through the artistry of Belgian chocolates. This is the Daily Roundup on EAC News Channel. A very good evening to you. My name is Dekanin. The minister delegate attached to the Prime Minister Gai Kim Hoon has stated to the media that the Prime Minister's visit to South Korea to co-chair and attend the 2022 World Peace Summit has brought a lot of benefits to Cambodia. EAC News reporter Dashana Goshen has more details. Speaking at a press conference at Phnom Penh International Airport on Sunday night upon Prime Minister Hun Sen's return to Cambodia, the minister delegate attached to the Prime Minister, Kao Kim Hun, provided a summary of the Prime Minister's achievements during his visit to South Korea, such as meeting with several South Korean leaders, including President Moon Jae-in, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Park Byung-suk, and former Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. He added that the 50th Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Newton Leroy Gingrich, publicly declared that Prime Minister Hun Sen is a patriotic person upon observing the Prime Minister's receipt of the 2022 Sun Hak Peace Prize. He said that this was notable since it is known that political representatives from the United States do not easily give such recognition. The former Speaker acknowledged Prime Minister Hun Sen's efforts and sacrifice to end the civil war in Cambodia and bring peace. Mr. Kao Kim Hun further stated that Prime Minister's visit to South Korea has brought specific benefits to Cambodia by furthering the bilateral work between the two countries, promoting trade, investment, and the diplomatic work between South Korean and Cambodian National Assemblies, and also further advancing forward the Cambodia-Korea Free Trade Agreement. He noted some of the messages Prime Minister Hun Sen shared while in Seoul related to building peace worldwide, with the key statement being that war cannot be ended by war. The Prime Minister also further provided advice on the peace process in the Korean Peninsula, pushing for the concept of two states towards one nation, one peninsula, one people, and one culture. Prime Minister Hun Sen traveled to Seoul on 10th February to co-chair the three-day 2022 World Peace Summit. At the summit, he also accepted the Sun Hak Peace Prize, making him the first ASEAN leader to receive the award from the Universal Peace Federation. Darshan Agauchen, EAC News. Two years have passed since Prime Minister Hun Sen expressed his love and surprised the world by allowing the U.S. cruise ship Westerdam to dock at Sihanouk Wheel Port amid the emerging global COVID-19 pandemic. EAC News reporter Dashana Gauchin have more. The ship, carrying a total of more than 2,000 people, initially departed from Hong Kong and was barred from docking by authorities in Taiwan, the Philippines, Japan, South Korea, Guam, and Thailand due to concerns that there may be COVID-19 infections among the thousands of passengers aboard the ship. 14 February 2020 also happened to coincide with Valentine's Day. Hence, Prime Minister Hun Sen greeted disembarking passengers with roses, a symbol of Cambodia's love and generosity to the world. Allowing the Westerdam cruise ship to dock shocked the world at the time, and many admired that Cambodia dared to step up and accept the potential risk which no other country would dare. While passengers disembarked from the ship onto Cambodian soil, many expressed their emotions, some even shed tears. At the time, former U.S. President Donald Trump wrote on his Twitter account, Thank you, beautiful Cambodia, for hosting the Westerdam cruise ship docked at your port. The United States will remember Cambodia's virtues. Darshan Agochen, EAC News. The Minister of Economy and Finance, Deputy Prime Minister On Pon Manirot, has said that the Royal Government of Cambodia has released an additional 100 million US dollars to help the agriculture sector and small and medium sized enterprises in Cambodia, both priority sectors in the process of economic recovery from the COVID 19 crisis. EAC News reporter Robin Lim has more. At the launching ceremony on the raising of funds for small and medium-sized enterprises and the Rural Development Bank for Agriculture in Cambodia, conducted virtually on Monday, Deputy Prime Minister On Puan Monirot stated that 
the 2021 to 2023 strategic framework document to restore the economy aims to achieve its goal in the near and medium term and return Cambodia to a normal rate of economic growth and resilience. He said that in order to rehabilitate national economic growth, practical activities have been launched in many sectors and $100 million is being released by the Royal Government of Cambodia to support the two priority sectors of agricultural and small and medium-sized enterprises, which are important both in terms of job creation and in improving the living standards of the people. He added that to promote SMEs and the priority sectors, the governments had introduced a number of mechanisms, including the imposition of state taxes on equipment and machinery, the establishment of skill development fund, and the Entrepreneurship Development Fund, the creation of an SME bank in Cambodia, the implementation of an SME co-financing program, and an additional special government financing program to provide concessional interest rate loans for the agricultural industry through the Rural and Agricultural Development Bank, with the purpose of providing credit guarantees to enterprises that are experiencing a shortage of collateral. The Minister of Economy and Finance stated that after seeing the positive implementation of the first phase of the project to support SMEs, the government has decided to continue this project into its second phase, which was launched in August 2021 with a budget of $140 million. He said that as of 17th January 2022, phase two of the project has reached about 90% completion. He further added that the rural development and Agriculture Bank, a special $73 million financing program, has been implemented to support the production of rice in order to maintain peace and stability and boost exports. Another $50 million is allocated to support handicrafts, small and medium enterprises in the agriculture sector. He said, through this special program, enterprises in the agriculture sector have the opportunity to expand their business improve their production lines, and boost exports in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Deputy Prime Minister On Puan Morirat emphasized that SMEs not only contribute to supporting Cambodia's economic growth and job creation, but also play an important role in building the resilience of the national economy. SMEs, in fact, make up about 98% of all businesses in Cambodia and contribute to 58% of the country's GDP and provide employment to 73% of the population in Cambodia. Additionally, the agricultural sector contributes to about 22% of the national GDP. Robin Lim, EEC News. A traffic accident and subsequent shooting has caused the death of a Chinese man in Siena Wheel. Authorities report the collision of two cars behind the White Sand Casino led to five shots being fired and the killing of a man in his Audi. EAC News reporter Dashana Gauchin has the story. Sienakville authorities report five shots being fired, most likely starting from a traffic accident, which has caused the death of a Chinese man in his car. The incident occurred at 9 p.m. on Saturday along the dam road behind the White Sand Casino in Village 4, District 4, Sienakville. Authorities at the scene concluded that this fatal shooting was likely to have started from a traffic accident, where two cars, a white Prius and a white Audi, both with license plates from Phnom Penh, collided and caused extensive damage to the vehicles. After the incident, the driver of the white Prius pulled out a handgun and fired five shots at the Audi, killing the Chinese man driving the car. The suspect then promptly fled the scene. Sienegville police have collected some clues from the scene of the crime and are continuing to search for the suspect using specialized procedures. The body of the victim is being kept at the Provincial Referral Hospital, waiting for the competent experts to perform an autopsy. Darshana Gauchan, EAC News. The Phnom Penh Capital Administration has decided to assign tasks to the 14 districts in cooperation with the Department of Education, the Department of Culture, the Department of Women's Affairs, and the Department of Health to monitor and take action against any irregular activities that may occur on Valentine's Day. EAC News reporter Robin Lim has more details. According to the instruction posted on Sunday, the governor of Phnom Penh, Kung Sreng, has banned all gatherings of students and youth from all public and private educational institutions and public places in Phnom Penh due to concerns regarding the community spread of COVID-19 Omicron variant. The Phnom Penh Capital Administration has urged for the management of educational institutions and for teachers, parents, and guardians to work hard to educate and guide all students, children, and youth 
to respect the traditions and cultures of Cambodia. The administration added that this is so that the youth do not confuse the day of February 14th, Valentine's Day, as a day for boyfriend and girlfriends or for dating between lovers in order to avoid any immoral acts. The Phnom Penh Capital Administration has instructed 14 district administrations to cooperate with the relevant departments to implement the contents of this instruction effectively and responsibly. Robin Lim, EAC News. You're watching EAC News. Thank you for joining us. Cambodia has reported 512 new COVID-19 cases, including 16 that are imported. There have been 156 patient recoveries and once again, no deaths. Cambodia records its 10th day straight of an Omicron surge, with daily cases rising above 500 cases for the first time. The kingdom recorded 496 new community and 16 new imported cases of the new variant. This means that Cambodia has now recorded 3,514 cases of Omicron, 638 imported, and 2,876 community cases. Cambodia's COVID-19 case tally has now climbed to 123,955. The death toll stands at 3,015. The number of patients treated successfully since the pandemic reached Cambodia is 118,960, and the tally for imported cases has climbed to 20,495. Healthcare workers are currently treating a total of 2,056 patients. Now for a look at news making international headlines this Monday, 14 of February. Police used tear gas to disperse protesters demonstrating against COVID-19 restrictions near the Arc de Triomphe monument in Paris on Saturday, February 12, shortly after a freedom convoy against COVID-19 restrictions made it into the capital. On the Champs-Élysées, clouds of tear gas swirled through the terraces of bars and restaurants. Railed against riot police also threw tear gas grenades to maintain order at an authorized street protest, where demonstrators, including some yellow vests, railed against President Emmanuel Macron's coronavirus vaccine past rules and the current cost of living. On the Champs-Élysées, police deployed tear gas into the evening as sporadic scuffles continued and one person, police reported, collapsed on the sidewalk and was brought to the hospital for checks. France requires people to show proof of vaccination to enter public places such as cafes, restaurants, and museums, with a negative test no longer being sufficient for unvaccinated people. Police have said that they have so far arrested 54 people, handed out 337 fines, and stopped 500 vehicles from trying to get into Paris in the morning. The French Interior Ministry has said about 32,000 people have participated in protests nationwide, including 7,600 in Paris. <laughs> A fire broke out Saturday, February 12th at a Barcelona hotel, forcing some people to jump off to escape the fire and leaving one dead, nine injured, in Catalan police has said on Sunday, February 13th. A video from witnesses, Galim Andreas, showed people jumping from windows onto mattresses piled by bystanders below. One person who did not appear on the video was transferred to the clinic hospital in critical condition on Saturday, but died on Sunday, confirmed by regional police. Other four injured were transported to hospitals with less serious injuries and four people were medical discharge on the spot. Catalan police are investigating the causes of the fire. Palmeiras fans in Sao Paulo broke out into a riot on Saturday, February 12th, after their team lost the Club World Cup final against Britain's Chelsea. After the match, police arrived close to the Alliance Park Stadium, where followers of the Brazilian team had gathered hours earlier to watch the much-awaited match. Police fired stun bombs and pepper spray to disperse the riot. Sao Paulo's military police have said that a man was shot and killed during the riot, and the person responsible for shooting him has been arrested by authority. The incident will be further investigated by the police department for repression and analysis of sports intolerance offenses. Chelsea were crowned FIFA Club World Cup champions for the first time as Kai Havertz struck home a penalty deep into extra time, earning them a 2-1 victory over Palmeiras. Palmeiras had been bidding to become the fourth Brazilian club to win the title. <laughs> Now 
U.S. President Joe Biden and Russia's Vladimir Putin have spoken by phone for an hour on Saturday, February 12, after Washington and its allies have warned that Russian forces could invade Ukraine at any moment. The White House confirmed that President Joe Biden spoke with President Vladimir Putin on Saturday to make clear that if Russia further invades Ukraine, the U.S. and its allies will impose swift and severe sanctions on Russia. President Biden has urged President Putin to engage in de-escalation and diplomacy instead. The U.S. State Department has ordered most of its embassy staff to leave Ukraine, adding to its call on Friday for private citizens to get out of the country within 48 hours. The Pentagon has said it was withdrawing about 150 military trainers. In the latest effort to avert hostilities, the Biden-Putin call began at 11.04 a.m. Eastern Time and ended at 12.06 p.m., a White House official has said. Russia's military buildup near Ukraine and a surge of military activity has fueled fears that Russia could invade. Russia denies having any such plans. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said on Saturday, February 12, the panic surrounding the threat of an imminent Russian invasion doesn't help his country, as a number of countries have already issued warnings for their citizens to leave Ukraine. Speaking in Ukraine's southern Kherson region, Zelensky has said that he has a lot of information and the best of friend for enemies in panic. Panic won't help. This is what President Volodymyr Zelensky has said. Zelensky, during the military drills at the Kamchak training ground, some 20 kilometers from the border of Kremlin, which is Russian annexed from Ukraine in 2014. Tensions have been mounting for weeks during the Russian military buildup near its ex-Soviet neighbor. Washington has announced on Friday, February 11th, as an invasion could happen any time, and it has urged US citizens in Ukraine to leave the country right away saying that it would not send troops to evacuate them if conflict erupts. A string of other countries, including Britain, Japan and Australia, have also said their citizens should leave. On Sunday, 13 February 2022, the Swiss electorate voted on the popular initiative Yes to the Ban on Animal and Human Experiments, Yes to Research that Brings Safety and Progress. A German doctor who initiated referendum on ban on lab testing on animals, Dr. Renato Wernley, says animals should not suffer for the sake of humans. He has also said they have spoken to people who develop research methods. Animals' experiments for scientific reasons are very questionable and often lead to volatile results. Using animals as instruments is difficult because they also have moods, emotion, and psych. Dr. Renato Wernley says scientists must make preliminary tests meticulous and thorough and look at alternative methods such as biochips with cell cultures and organ cultures, but also computer simulations and epidemiological studies, looking at everything that is possible. Only when one is totally certain should an experiment move forward with application on humans. Such experiments could be used as specialized therapy on those who are ill, but today the experiments still remain potentially harmful as they are carried out on the healthy. I think there are people who think all animal experiments are unnecessary. I don't agree with them, obviously, because I think that the questions we are asking and the questions we need to answer to make progress in biology, to develop better treatment, to understand disease processes, we need to look at the entire biological system of the organism. Well, I don't think they are cruel because we have very strict regulations how to treat an animal. We are. Um, very certain that we avoid pain and stress as much as possible. We certainly do not torture the mice and we have certain ways of killing that is like putting them to sleep as your vet would do with your pet. So this is absolutely not cruel. I think to be an example for the world, Switzerland should not move away from animal experiments, but rather be very transparent inform the public what we are doing, why we are doing it, how we are doing it, so make people understand the necessity of this type of experiment. More than 550,000 animals died in laboratory tests in 2020 in Switzerland, according to government statistics. The figure includes 400,000 mice and rats, nearly 4,600 dogs, 1,500 cats, and 1,600 horses. Primates, cows, pigs, fish, and birds were also killed during and after experiments. 
Dr. Wernley has said research methods such as biochips, tiny chips that host large numbers of biochemical reactions, computer simulations, or microdosing of humans were more effective than animal testing. The result of the referendum will be binding. The ban is not expected to pass, however, to the relief of the pharmaceutical sector, which has warned the move would halt new drug development and force companies and researchers to relocate abroad. Pharmaceuticals lobby group Interpharma says the sector, which includes companies such as Roche and Novartis, contributes to about 9% of the Swiss economy, including indirect effects, and generates nearly half of Swiss exports. Interpharma has led the industry's opposition, saying the proposals would be devastating if adopted. Pharma bosses have warned that an animal testing ban could lead to the end of new drugs. Maurice van den Broek of the University of Zurich conducts research that implants tumors into mice to study how their immune system can be strengthened to fight cancer. Before scientists start an animal experiment, they must prove there is no alternative and their research is important, she said. The questions we need to answer to make progress in biology, to develop better treatment, to understand disease processes, we need to look at the entire biological system of the organism, she said, adding that animal testing is tightly regulated in Switzerland and thus is not cruel. The latest opinion polls show only 26% of voters in favor of a ban and 68% against. Wernley remains hopeful of success. Animal experiments are permitted in Switzerland as they are in many other countries. They are used in the development of drugs and therapies that offer better treatment of human and animal diseases. Switzerland has one of the strictest laws on animal testing in the world. An animal experiment is only authorized if the results cannot be obtained by other means. In addition, the benefit to society must justify the stress placed on the animals. Furthermore, researchers may only work with as many animals as is absolutely necessary in their experiments, and they must keep any stress on the animals to a minimum. The popular initiative calls for a ban on animal experiments. It would also lead to a ban on the import of products that have been developed using animal testing. Lastly, the initiative demands that research that does not involve animal experiments should receive at least the same level of state support as is currently provided for research involving animal experiments. Experiments on human beings would also be banned. If the initiative were accepted, no more new medicines would be developed in Switzerland using animal experiments, whether for humans or for animals. These medicines would include vaccines. Research and development on medicines or other products such as plant protection products would be restricted and possibly relocated abroad. After the break, a look at all the latest sports news. If it's happening and you need to know about it, you'll get it all right here. BAC News brings you updates and breaking news in English across all of our platforms and channels. The EAC News app, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and our website, www.eacnews.asia. 
Join me and the rest of the EAC News team every day on your favourite channels. EAC News, Cambodia made clear. ហើយលោកអ្នកជិតរៀបអាពីពីពីមែនទេហើយពិបាករោគ្រុំហ៊ុនថតវីដេអូផ្សាយផ្ទាល់ដែលមានគុណភាពមែនទេអស់កង្វ
Norway's Kasper Ruud said he made the perfect start to the 2022 season after winning his seventh ATP Four title at the Argentina Open in Buenos Aires on Sunday. Schwarzman had ended a 13-year wait for an Argentine champion with his 2021 title, but he could not repeat those heroics against Ruud. Rudd, the top seed, missed the chance to take an early lead after he failed to convert a set point at 5-4 in the opening set, allowing the second seeder Swazgerman to draw level 5-5. The Argentine then broke Rudd's serve in the 11th game before serving out for the set. The Norwegian missed four more break points in the second game of the second set, but four games later, he made it through the breakthrough to lead 4-2. Within minutes, he broke again to take the set 6-2 to level the match. In the deciding set, 23-year-old Rudd twice broke Schwarzman's serve without dropping a point. And despite having lost serve himself in the third game, he raced to a 4-1 lead. Schwarzman served four break points in the next game to prevent a fifth consecutive loss of his serve. But Rudd comfortably served out his next two games to win his second Argentina Open title after two hours, 37 minutes of play. His win in Buenos Aires in 2020 was his first ATP Tour title, which Sundays was given him his seventh. Rudd said after the match that he felt that he had been defending his title in Argentina, having not played the event since 2021. This is the first time I've had to defend a title and I was able to do it. So of course, I'm super happy, very excited, and I'm excited for all the clay tournaments, obviously to come this year. Let's see how I can do. But the goal, of course, is to do well, and I think this is a perfect start. Now let's have a look at the weather and what you can expect tomorrow. Finally, Valentine's Day is a special day, and a good way to make connection is to give flowers or chocolate. We can celebrate Valentine's Day in many different ways, with or without chocolate, but we all know that chocolate is something we all love. It's sweet, it can spice up relationships because it is an aphrodisiac, and chocolate is a great gift for Valentine's Day because it is a piece of your heart that you can give to your partner, and that's why it's a tradition for many. As we celebrate Valentine's Day on February 14th, award-winning Belgian chocolatier Bernard Chauvin's hopes to melt lovers' hearts with new caramel, raspberry, and passion fruit-flavored praline chocolate. Alongside Easter, St. Nicholas, and Christmas, the celebration of love and romance is an opportunity for Belgian chocolatiers to show off their expertise and originality. Following in the footsteps of famed artisan Jean Newhouse, the inventor of the hard-shelled cream-filled praline in 1912. Chauvin's has gained fame after being awarded the title of Wallonia's Best Chocolatier by French restaurant guide Gault Emilot, a high point in his four-year-long career. Thanks to the Gault Emilot effect, many more people come here. I don't know what to expect in terms of sales. Therefore, each week, I produce my assortment of pralines all over again. We produce on a daily basis, Chauvin's has said. A former salesman for one of Belgium's largest telecommunication companies, Chauvin's life took a new twist when a family visit to a chocolatier fair inspired a new passion in him that led to his career change. We visited one booth, then two, then three. Then at the end of the day, I told myself, wow, it could really be nice to do this job. I trained for two years, then the passion came, he added. Located a few kilometers from Brussels in the town of the Chaumont Gisteau, the minimalism of Chauvin's shop contrasts with those in the Belgian capital's landmark Sablon district, home to many of the kingdom's best-known chocolatiers. There, brightly colored hearts with caramel ganache centers fill the display cases to the delight of chocolate-loving locals and visitors alike like. Thank 
keep watching the daily roundup here on EAC News Channel. For more breaking news and updates, check our website eacnews.asia or search EAC News on Telegram or at your favorite app store. More from EAC News team tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We will see you then. Thank you.